Hey, this is Joe with Personas. Today, let's talk about four different ways to handle groups of tracks in Studio One. It's actually five. We're going to talk about groups, folders, buses, effects channels, and VCA faders. All of these are tools that we can use to manipulate more than one track at a time. So why would we want to do that? So let's take a look at this session here. Very simple. I've brought in drum tracks. So these are seven tracks of a drum part that I recorded here in my studio. Okay, once it's recorded, we want to manipulate these tracks in different ways. And while we can just leave them like this, and we can work on the kick drum, we can work on the snare drum, we can work on the tom, we can do that, but you'll find over time that you'll want to do stuff to all the tracks at once. It could be as simple as you just want to do a quick edit on the tracks, or something as complicated as doing various routing and things like that. So I'm going to go through the different options you have available to you, because you do have several different options, and then uh, why you would choose to use one over the other. Uh, one of the beauties of a piece of software like Studio One that has matured over the years is that we give you several different ways to accomplish essentially the same thing. And while that can be really complicated if you're just starting out, it ends up making it a very user-friendly piece of software because you can choose your own adventure, so to speak, and develop your own workflows that work best for you. So I, for example, I like to use folders and buses a lot. Someone else might love to use groups and VCAs, and we can both accomplish the same general tasks, but we're just gonna go about it differently. So let's dive into that, hopefully clear some confusion for you and how these work, and maybe even open you up to some new ideas of ways you can handle your tracks in Studio One. So first, let's talk about the group. This is one that I don't, actually, know what? Let's not do the group first, let's do the folder first. So so inside of our arranger, right, we have these tracks, right? Right now, they're just individual tracks separate from one another. There's really nothing connecting them except that they are side by side, and it's all a recording of the same performance. By the way, if you select a track, you can press the up and down arrows to jump between them. It's kind of nifty. All right, so one of the things I like to do all the time, and this, is, this isn't the way I worked for years, and then once I discovered it, I really enjoyed it. So the one thing I like to do is I like to select all my tracks. So I click the kick drum track, hold down shift, and select the bottom track. So it's selected all the tracks in between. And if I right click, I can choose to, to uh, pack these, I always forget the word, to pack these into a folder. Um, so folder is the keyword here, pack is just we could group them into a folder. It's tricky because there are such things as groups, and we're going to talk about that in a second, but we're specifically wanting to pack these into a folder. I've actually got that mapped to uh, alt left arrow, but I always forget that that's the key command. There we go. So now all of these, if we click on this folder here, we can open and close this folder. So when the folder is closed, we can still see everything. Nothing changes behavior-wise. Um, if I hit play, we'll still hear drums. But um, now we've got a folder here, so we can kind of clean things up and group things together. I almost never collapse the folders, but I use it for a few other things that I'll talk about in a second. Uh, folder named track eight isn't terribly helpful, so I like to name it drums. Now, one of the things I like to do, and you can copy this if you want, is for all my grouping type things, like folders and buses, I like to use all caps. And then with my individual tracks, I like to do just normal not all caps. That helps me kind of visually distinguish between the two. So once I've got a group here, you may think, okay, what's the point? Once I have this folder in place, what's the point? Well, if I have a whole bunch of tracks in a session, having them grouped into folders helps me kind of visually see what I'm working with. So I'll have a drums folder, um, a guitars folder, and basically a folder for everything. Uh, and then I can uh, collapse them and expand them here, but that's really not the feature that I like the most. The feature I like the most is once I have this created and I've named this folder, I can click this drop down menu here. And if you don't see the drop down, it's just because your track's too small. So zoom out enough using this down here if you want. I hold down Command and then scroll with my mouse to get a big zoom. Uh, come over here to this drop down, and you'll see if I drop this down, there's an option to add a bus channel. And that adds a bus channel for this specific folder. So when I do that, check out what happens. Suddenly, a little fader appears here, and it says drums there. And if I switch over to the mixer, I can see now I've got these are the tracks that I have, and now I've got an extra channel here in the mixer, which is a drums bus. We know it's a bus because it has this little 
uh, symbol here, which is a symbol for bus. You can see it's multiple channels combining into one. This is the symbol for a audio track that looks kind of like a waveform. This is a bus. It's also a folder. So this is now kind of both. So the folder by itself was somewhat useful, but now it's incredibly useful because my folder is now also my bus. So if I expand and collapse this folder inside of the mixer, it also expands and collapses it inside of the arranger. Now, if yours doesn't do that, that's a setting. You can turn that on or off depending on your preference. Come over to the wrench inside of the mixer, and I always forget the name of it. This one, link, expansion, and visibility of folder tracks. That means your folder tracks will be expanded and collapsed on both windows, the arranger and the mixer. Uh, they'll sync up together. Otherwise, you can have it expanded on one and collapsed on another, but that gets confusing. I'm not smart enough to keep track of that, so I'm going to keep them linked together like this. So now we've gone from having a folder, which just physically groups them together, uh, literally like a like a, like a file folder, um, but now we've, we've kind of morphed into the next thing, which is a bus. Now, buses are really common. You, you probably, there's a good chance you already know what a bus is. A bus is a place for me to route as many tracks as I want. So all of my drums, instead of going to my main out, which is also a form of a bus, this is the mix bus, it's now going to this bus over here. And then that bus, as you can see, is routed to the main output. We can tell what's routed to this bus by clicking here, and we can see a list of all the channels that are routed to this bus. That can be handy in a pinch if you're not sure things are routed properly. That's one way to tell. We can also see that all of these channels on the lower section, this is the output for each channel, it is outputting to the drums bus, which is this here. We know that because the name is right there. So this corresponds to this. Okay, so now that all of these are routed to the drums bus, what can we do? Well, a couple of things. The simplest thing is we can now move the fader up and down and adjust the volume of our drum mix. This is one of the most common uses. It's similar to if you've used an analog console that has subgroups, it's a similar idea where maybe you're mixing a live show and you want to have one fader for all the drums and you've got several mics on stage. You route all of those, sometimes it's a push button thing on an analog mixer, to subgroup one. Now when you move subgroup one up and down, it adjusts the volume of that entire bus, right? Now it's important to note that as I move this fader up and down, it's not moving these faders, it's not doing anything to these, they're just all being routed through this bus, and this is kind of the final stop for them before going to the mix bus. Other things I can do, I can mute the entire drums, I can solo the drums. You'll notice when I solo the drums, it actually solos all the channels so that they're open to be fed through here, and I can adjust the volume. The other big thing that I can do, and this is probably the biggest reason why I use buses, is I can put plugins here on the bus itself. So you've seen me do this a thousand times, I'm sure. Uh, I can come in here and I can put something like, something simple like Pro EQ on my drum bus, and now this EQ is being applied across the entire mix. Uh, the entire drum mix. So all the drums are going through this process. It's a, it's an efficiency thing. It also is a tone thing. Putting like a bus a compressor on your drum bus gives it a cool sound, different from if you compressed individual channels. So that's what a bus does. So we've gone through what a folder is and what a bus is and how those are kind of intertwined. And if you set it up the right way, they become one in the same. So folder and bus almost becomes, you can almost use those terms interchangeably. Um, but now let's talk about groups. Now groups are things that I don't use all that often because Studio One is set up in such a way that I don't have to most of the time. So for example, if I wanted to turn down these three channels here, at the same time in the same way. All I have to do in Studio One is select the first one, hold down Shift, select the last one, and then move one of the faders, and they'll all move together. And as of, I believe, version six, or just one of the later versions of version five, the panning also is connected. So I can do the panning and the volume with a single click. And I didn't have to create a group for these, I just had to literally select them. Another way you can do that is click one, hold down Command on the Mac, op, uh, Control on the PC, select several channels, and if I move one fader, they all move together. So it's kind of this temporary, um, moment in time, momentary grouping is what I would call it. I don't know what they call it, but um, that can work really well. But there are some times where you want things to stay grouped for a longer time, and you don't want to have to have them selected. That's where groups come in. So the first way to do that is you could literally select all of these, right-click on it, and choose Group Selected Tracks, or Command-G is the shortcut for that. We can name this symbols because it's several tracks that have the symbol sound in them. So one th couple of things happen. First of all, we have a little 
group icon that showed up here in the fader just to let us know. Uh, and then now, even if I don't have them selected, if I move one, they all move. So they're behaving the exact same way, but I no longer have to have them selected. Uh, and also if I come in here into the arranger, if I click on one and hit delete, it applies across all three. So if you need to group things together for editing, for example, groups can be a great way to do that. And then when you're done with the group, you can select them all, right click and choose dissolve the group. Um, and that will dissolve the group and it'll go away. I don't use that feature ever in that way because like I said at the beginning, Studio One gives us multiple options. Since I'm already using folders and buses, you may have noticed in your folder track in here in the arranger, you've got this button here. What is that? That is a group button for this folder. So if I click that, now all the channels in this folder have been grouped together just like I talked about a second ago. So this is what I would use if I was editing drums and the drummer said, hey, um, let's find a hit that's not completely on, on the beat, just for an example. Uh, of course, he's annoyingly in time. Okay, this one's a little bit ahead of the beat. So he says, hey, that's a little ahead of the beat. Can you move it back? Well, I don't want to move just this channel. I want to move all of them, right? Because it's all one performance. So I can select this one, cut it, cut it here, select it and move it, holding command and option. And it does it to all of the channels, not just the one that I selected because this little group light is on. What's cool about this is once I'm done, I hit X to crossfade. If I want to turn that group back off and I don't want it to stay grouped, I just click that again. So it's a temporary group that's tied to this folder. See, the folder tracks are really powerful. Um, so I can do this, do what I need to do to everything, and then turn it back off if I need to. And that way I don't have to do the right click create group thing or manage whatever groups I have. It's a very kind of easy workflow. Click that, do what you got to do, unclick it, and you're good to go. So that's how groups work. And you can group any, any amount of tracks that you want. And you can even, there's even settings for what, what actually gets grouped. If it's everything on the channel or if it's just the volume or just the panning, you have a lot of flexibility there that we're not going to dive into here. Okay. So now then there's effects channels. Now, what does an effects channel do? Typically for me, for like a drum mix like this, I might want to put room reverb, like the medium studio room reverb on the snare drum. I'm not going to put that plug in on the snare. I'm going to drag that plug into the send section and it's going to create an effects channel over here. So we'll color this one bright white so you can see it. Well, that doesn't show up as white. Let's make it uh, that. So this lighter color is our reverb. Now, let's. what can we learn by just looking at it? Well, we can see that it is going to the main output. Okay, It's not going to my drum bus. It's going to the main output. And then we can see by clicking here that is it is being fed by the snare drum. Okay, How is it being fed by the snare drum via this? room reverb send that we can turn up and down. So just to give you an idea, here's what that sounds like. It's probably going to be way too much, but you'll get the point. Okay, the 80s called, we are back. By the way, this is completely off topic, but whenever I use reverb, I always put a pro EQ with a high pass filter after it, just because reverbs can be muddy. Listen to how much better it sounds. Like all that woo 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 is gone. That's probably a little bit too much, but you get the idea. Anyway, always do that. But anyway, so now I've got this reverb. So what what happens if I were to? So what this is? This is an effects channel. It's similar to a bus in almost every way. It's just specifically designed to be used on this for the sins of things. So if I come in here and I solo the snare drum, you'll notice this effects channel gets lit up too because it knows, Studio One knows that we want to hear the reverb with that snare hit. And if we don't, we can always turn it off here and now it's not sending it and it's nice and dry. That dry snare sounds so good. Um, but what if we were to mute the drums? This is one sticking point that you may want to pay attention to. So if I mute the drums here, if I press the mute button on this drums bus, you'll notice these channels don't get muted. It's just muting the bus. So these channels are still happening. So what happens when I mute the drum bus? We're still hearing the reverb. Why? Because we're only muting the bus. It's not actually muting the individual channels. It's just muting this bus. So this snare drum is still doing everything it was doing. It just gets muted at the bus level. But since we've got a send here, sending a copy of the snare over to the room reverb, we end up still hearing that because it doesn't get muted. So what are our options here? Well, we can 
we can try to remember to mute the reverb too. Um, we can turn the reverb off here, or we can just say, I'm fine with that. But it's important to know that that happens, because in certain situations, you might want to mute the drums, but you're still hearing the drum reverb, and that could be a little annoying. Another option is you could route, you could technically route the reverb to your drums bus, and then it would get muted. But that might not be ideal either, because maybe you've got more than just the drums going to the reverb. So you can see how this gets a little bit complicated. One option would be to create a VCA for these channels. And let me show you what a VCA does. So if we were to go back a little bit, let's say we get rid of this uh, folder entirely. So the folder's gone. Let's get rid of this bus as well. So now we're back kind of where we started with just our drum channels. If we select all of these and we pack them into a folder again, whoops, and we I hit the wrong button, and we pack these into a folder and we call this drums again. Now, this drop down here that we did before, what if we selected instead of bus channel, we selected add VCA channel? Okay, it looks the same. On this page, it behaves exactly the same. We have a fader here that we can adjust the volume up and down. We've got this thing we can click to, to enable the groups. But if we come back over here, you'll notice this folder is now a VCA instead of a bus. What does that mean? Well, first of all, it means the fader is red, uh, which is a big giveaway. Secondly, you'll notice there's nothing up here. We can't add plugins to this. This is just a VCA. Now, VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier, I believe. Um, it's an old term for a, basically a remote control fader. So this fader is now acting as a remote control for the drums. So what happens when I move this fader up and down? Check it out. All the drum faders move with it. What happens when I mute this? All the drum channels mute. Solo, Solo behaves the same as it would with a bus. So what are the benefits of this? Well, now if I'm listening to my drum mix and I mute the drum on the VCA level, it mutes everything. And so now our everything gets muted as you would expect that to work. This is not a workflow that I personally use, but I'm intrigued by it because honestly, until setting up for this video, I didn't know or I'd forgotten that you can have the folder tied to a bus or to a VCA. Um, and the VCA might be useful. I still re typically prefer the bus option because I can put plugins on my bus and I like to do that quite a bit. So if we were to go back and add a bus channel for this, um, which is this right here. Look, it made everything gray. It looks like I've made the movie, the video in black and white. Um, one option to, to solve this problem is to put the room reverb on the entire bus instead of on the snare drum. So then if I'm listening, downsides obviously kick and cymbals and everything else goes to the reverb so that may not be what you want but that does technically solve that reverb problem and sometimes i like having reverb on everything especially if you've put the eq after it to make sure it's not super beefy and huge all right this ended up being a longer video than i expected it to be but it's a fairly complicated topic and i didn't want to blow through it and leave you more confused than when you started uh, but hopefully you can see how at least one of these can be a really valuable addition to your toolbox. I would not recommend that you have to use all of these. Um, so we talked about groups, buses, folders, effects channels, VCAs, um, but maybe one or two you haven't explored very much. So try it out. If it intrigues you, go use it on a mix, see how it works for you, find out all the little quirks and things that you can use it for, uh, and find a workflow that makes you happy. For me personally, the folder plus bus workflow with the occasional effects channel works wonderfully, um, but maybe you have a whole different workflow that works well for you. All right, that's it for me for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.